Hello everyone, this is Grandmaster Dr. Thor Templar, and I am going to talk about the most important occult ability there is, or empowerment. One of the problems is, is everyone wants to, of course, reach levels of high empowerment, of extreme abilities, and they want to do it as fast as possible. And of course, everyone wants basically, as I've talked about in other uh, lectures, they want super abilities, meaning they don't want to really work too hard to get that. And of course, you know, that's human nature and we all want to uh, do that. But there, there's basically nothing in life that is at a higher level that isn't achieved through a lot of self-sacrifice, a lot of uh, clichéish blood, sweat and tears. And if you want to achieve anything uh, in the business world, in the scientific world, um, basically it boils down to if you're going through the classical roots of, uh, of, of joining large corporations, um, you have to have high qualifications to do that. It means you've spent years and years in uh, schools learning your craft. And a lot of uh, corporations won't even hire you unless you have a virtually perfect grade point average. And many engineers, from what I understand, uh, are even, uh, this is required, of what is your grade point average? Not the fact that you graduated school and you were able to get your certificate, yeah, but how good were you at it? And they won't even hire you unless you're in the top 10%. So it's very interesting to see that, you know, when it comes to everything else in the world, which are basically common, even we could call these almost idiot skills. I mean, anyone can learn most of these and get these college degrees. It's not really something that's very rare in this day and age. And there'd be a lot more of them if people could afford them. So, I mean, you know, learning to be a machine, take in, take in information and regurgitate it out to pass a test even at a very high level, is not necessarily a very rare skill. And it's basically so unrare uh, that there's a huge filtering process that goes on that people are not allowed to get education by them not even to be afforded to afford it because the market would be inundated with these types of training. So, but regardless of that, you still have to invest a huge amount of time and a huge amount of energy and a huge amount of money uh, to actually um, achieve these levels. And of course, for some reason, occultism, people think they can read a book and everything's going to be transferred to them. It's rubbing the magic genie and giving the information to you where you're empowered again. You know, basically a super ability type thing. You know, like Superman, he didn't work to have any abilities. He came from a planet to this planet and instantly had all his powers. That's what everybody really wants. So it's very important that you understand that and um, understand the folly of that. It just isn't a reality. We move you as quickly through uh, all of these processes as we possibly can, but there is no way of giving people ultimate empowerment. You open up energy streams and so forth so that they empower themselves. But one of the key things if you want to be effective on any level is staying centered. This is the most key of all realities that you need to stay in. And the problem is, is that it's very difficult to achieve. So, um, which means you have to be in a controlled, uh, created universe of your own and not step out of that. And we've talked about this, about creating your own universe. And, you know, I can't emphasize that more, which is the reason why I state that at the end of all of my lectures, is the fact that you have to control your reality uh, to the utmost if you expect to manifest what you want. Um, the world is pulling you out of your own reality into their reality and depowering you on every level. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to operate this way. And the minute you do that, you're depowering yourself and you're working in their reality. Well, if you work in their reality, you're never going to manifest anything. So there is no reality until the occult scientist creates it. And that's what you have to do. You have to create your own reality and stay in that reality. One of the problems is that people don't stay in their reality get pulled out. And some of these are, um, are necessity in life uh, that you have to bend certain. I wouldn't say getting pulled out of your image. You have to bend to other things to, uh, to meet the requirements or to get what you desire in your reality uh, from their reality. So there are, 
you know, th th there are bits and pieces of this that you have to obviously learn how to deal with in your life. But ultimately, you're working from your reality to control their reality to get what you want from it. So it's very important to do that. The minute you completely step out of your reality, you're being controlled by someone else, which means your manifestations will be based on what they want to give you or what's happening there. Now, one of the main problems is that everybody's uh, consciousness is out of control. Nobody is really centered. And this is a term I guess a lot of people have heard. Um, but I don't think they quite understand it. But, you know, there's always been this, uh, this uh, middle ground of being stable and not letting things bother you in life that really is something you have to work hard to do. Because our mind uh, triggers our emotions in, and our mind is telling ourselves, well, freak out, I'm upset about that, I'm angry, somebody said something, and I want to go over there and punch them or scream at them. Or, uh, this is making me feel bad. Um, and the problem is we've never really been taught of how to take this worthless information, which is basically some individual's opinion, usually warped and perverted, um, about ourselves and disregard it. Uh, you know, it's, it's very common to, uh, to understand how the mind works is the fact that, you know, you can get a thousand compliments and uh, a couple of criticisms. And what do you remember? You, know, you remember the negativities. And we live in a very negative world and everybody's putting each other down and hiding behind the internet, uh, saying whatever they, they can because they're not right in front of you and they're not traceable or anything else. So they're real heroes that way. And, you know, the internet is pervasive of this really negativity and nasty aspects uh, pretty much on every level. Uh, which shows you the inner core of how people really operate and the kind of low-class, uh, low-energy, demonic uh, forces that are on this planet and perpetrated, of course, by the species that is, uh, that is dominating this planet, which is humans, who willingly take on all this stuff. Uh, they don't certainly need much pushing from a, quote, evil or negative or satanic spirit. They're more than happy to embrace this because it's the general human nature. Um... But, you know, understanding that means what is the validity of someone's opinion? If someone comes up to you, even if you know them, even somewhat or even well, and they say negative things about you, um, it's almost impossible for the average person to disregard this. But where is that coming from and who is this person? I mean, there's constructive criticism, and I don't even like to call it criticism. There's constructive commenting uh, to assist change. Uh, which has to be done. But it has to be done in a very particular way that this is uh, for your benefit and not to be nasty. And, and there can be with truth-telling of people, which I am famous for, of, of, of walking a tight line between being very honest and crossing that line into nasty, um, which is never my intention. But um, people take it that way because they're not used to hearing truth. I mean, it's generally, it's really unfortunate that... Uh, a lot of people in life get away with things. They're never really told that, you know, you're doing things wrong. You are a fuck-up. You are a problem. You need to work on this. You're not helping yourself or others in this reality. And it's unfortunate that a lot of people aren't told this in life at earlier stages so they can correct themselves. Uh, so they go on life and they become a burden and a nasty problem to everybody. Um, but in general, you know, you have to develop uh, a position where theoretically if somebody comes up and starts screaming in your face like some sort of uh, off-kilter drill sergeant uh, who screams in your face, which has been seen in a million movies, and I guess the Marine Corps is known for this as an intimidating factor, and it's deliberately done to intimidate you. Uh, but, you know, life is like that as well. They don't have to necessarily stand an inch from you and scream in your face. They can uh, do this by criticizing you, putting you down, and uh, so many other things. And based on what? I mean, who are these people and who really cares what they say? But, you know, you're being inflicted on that and you take it very personally like that drill sergeant is uh, someone you care about, or your daddy, or anything else. You know, even if it is your father, who gives a damn? Where is he coming from? Is he any person to be respected? Does he know anything? past the common brainwashing. I mean, as an occult scientist, you're an elite individual who doesn't follow silly mumbo-jumbo religions, doesn't, under, does, 
doesn't go for silly belief systems and follow the feather heads or the diaper wearing or, or get fake titles. You know, you don't go into those things. We're not part of that. You know, we're part of being an, an advanced elite education, uh, educated group of people who can speak well on whatever it is that they're involved with with anyone at any time. So you should understand the fact that you're looking at something that basically is a lower creation. Are you enraged if an ant bites you? Uh, or there's a cockroach in your house? You deal with that, and it should be very non-emotional uh, in general. You deal with it, you dispatch it, and you move on. And you, know, you have to look at life like that. Um, and if you don't have this kind of attitude, everybody at work, everybody in your family is going to have you on this emotional roller coaster. I mean, what someone does at work or other places uh, to harass you is something that you have to, you know, as uh, the old saying goes, like a water off a duck's back. I mean, you really have to develop that you are not going to be affected by them. Um, you know, you're doing the best you can, I assume, and if you're not, you should uh, evaluate in a, a non-emotional way. Well, am, are these people dumping on me or causing me problems in life because I'm doing something wrong? And you do need to question that. Uh, you need to question all of these realities, and um, um, you need to examine that to see if you're causing your own problems. But most things, if you're a good person and you are moving up the ascension ladder, are going to run into all these things which will be amplified. And people will want to dump on you and give you negativity and uh, all of the things because they are weak people who are very negative, and that's what they're all about. So they don't build up things by being positive and giving uh, proper training and empowering people, uh, they build themselves up by trying to put other people down, who are generally easy to do because they are allow themselves to become victimized so much by giving some sort of credit to what someone tells them, whether whomever this is. Um, if, um, there are plenty of people who are convicted of crimes wrongly, who lose legal cases, who are 100% right, because somebody else uh, disagrees with what basically is the truth of the situation. So you're going to run into this. Now, do you let this devastate you and tear you apart? Well, it's fairly, it's ridiculous to do that because it stops your functioning in so many areas. And of course, you know, it's, this is all very easily said than done. But one of the major practices that you need to do, and what we talk about these core abilities and the foundations, is that you need these core abilities to be able to uh, progress in life and um, uh, be empowered magically. If you expect to reach high levels of empowerment, you can't be this emotional child letting your mind tell you everything. Uh, expecting superpowers and generally acting from a very emotional and childish aspect. You're not going to grow in power that way. You have to grow as a much higher person and uh, learn to deal with outside influences which are basically negative in your life and will continue to be negative. Now, you're not going to find any supports out there from anybody except a fellow occult scientist who is a person who is working with or a member of the guild. Everyone else is on their own little personal trip. And there's a lot of people who are very, very highly jealous of the empowerments that we offer and quite frankly don't want us helping people to break the common control they have on them. And this is not just society. This is uh, pretty much other New Agey and uh, metaphysical and religious organizations. So the whole idea is that um, uh, you have to be well understood that, that, you know, this is not a path of everybody's going to pat you on the shoulder. It's going to be the opposite. I mean, occultism in general is, uh, is a path that is frowned upon by uh, most people because they don't understand it. And, of course, there's also a lot of idiots in occultism. Uh, but religious group, groups, even non-traditional uh, religious groups, um, tend not to understand or give value to occultism uh, either. So, I mean, you know, you're in a very elite and unusual area, and, and you have to understand that. But you also understand that regardless of what practices you're doing, um, you um, are going to have conflict with others, or in life in general. And you just can't take what they tell you very seriously. I mean, um, that's why it's very important that you have to... Um, 
deal with certain people or situations that are happening, um, but you also ultimately don't get yourself into situations like that uh, to begin with. Once you start understanding and work from your higher consciousness, your inner magical being, uh, you're going to not put yourself into situations that uh, you have these kind of problems or be involved with this. But you know, you have to understand that you work in, in certain consciousnesses in certain places. When you're at work, you do whatever is required at that work to function there and get by and to get your little paycheck. Um, after that, you know, you're your own person. And uh, But even in these situations, you know, uh, if someone doesn't like your job, work, or you're not doing things that they particularly like, uh, and because it's a job that you may need to, the money from, probably you do, you want to obviously modify things to uh, find out what pleases that particular person to some extent. But, you know, you're doing the best you can. And I don't know what uh, people expect past that. Uh, if you don't ultimately get along with somebody, uh, constantly compromising to them, constantly bending over to them will not really do anything for your success in that particular job. You need to move on because they don't like you. They don't, will never give you credit and you'll never get anywhere. So, you know, it, it becomes a, a situation where you really have to watch yourself and be careful with all those things um, in general. Um, but you can't allow anybody in any situation to really get at the core of you and, and, and provoke uh, from you a reaction that they want to have happen. They then become in control of you. If you, someone says something to you and you answer back with, uh, uh, with, with the same type of intensity, whether they want to try and get you into a verbal argument or a physical fight or they just want to put you down and get you... Uh, freaked out so they uh, benefit from it because they've told you off or whatever. The point is anytime you play into that, every, anytime you um, allow people to get you emotional, you have lost and you've stepped out of your reality into theirs. Now they control you. So, well, how do you do that? How, you know, theoretically, if uh, someone was to throw a fireworks at you or a firecracker a foot from you that you shouldn't really jump uh, and react to that you should notice what is happening and intellectualize it and find out what is the best response to that not just jump this knee-jerk reaction uh, in life which may be uh, essential on some levels for physical survival in dangerous situations um, doesn't serve you at all in common society because people are going to say things, react things, and you're just going to, you know, the old saying is, I see red. And the point is, you just want to go out and strike back at someone who has insulted or struck at you in terms of that in a verbal fashion. Um, obviously, in physical fashions, you defend yourself, obviously. Uh, but the point is, is that you uh, to knee-jerk reactions and go after somebody because they've said something doesn't serve any purpose. And basically, as I said, they win the whole thing. They pulled you out of your consciousness, out of your reality, and put you in theirs where now they're going to tell you off and manipulate you and watch you skyrocket as you see red because you want to attack this situation. Well, that, that's nonsense and it doesn't work in society and the enemy wins that way. But what happens more than that is that it takes this spiritual effect on you where you are moved out of this well-being happy place and because someone says they don't like your food, they don't like the way you dress, they don't like this, they don't like that. Somehow that has meaning to you in some reality of what? Uh, most of these people that make these kind of comments have absolutely no effect on your life whatsoever. And who cares what the... You know, everybody's so worried about being embarrassed in what other people think. What do those other people do for you? They don't sign your checks. They're not sleeping with you. They're nothing. Who gives a rat's ass what other people think? Plain and simple. So the whole idea is that um, we um, need to stay in this quite centered reality where we're not affected by these things, where it's taken in as you'd be looking at a movie or reading a book. Mm, well, that's an interesting experience, and you should detach yourself from what's happening. And there are several tricks you can do with this, and the fact is you can also 
uh, use a, um, an interesting psychological method of using this is that when you get into a situation as that, is that you take your inner being and you step to the side there. You actually see yourself as two people. There's the person who is being victimized, which is not really you. That's just a Robotron. That's an android. And um, that is being affected while your inner core is not being at all. And this can be done very easily and completely um, with little practice, but with some practice. So the whole idea is that um, learning a little technique as simple as that can, can uh, stop this type of um, lack of centering, which destroys your life. Uh, if you're not doing that, if you're, if you're constantly upset and emotionally up and down all the time, you'll never achieve anything. You know, occult empowerment is about stabilization, about being centered to the point where, um, uh, where everything is, um, is at a particular state where you can deal. You can't deal with all these other energies if you're going to be operating from a common... Uh, reality that is out here. You have to change your reality. You have to be in an altered state of consciousness so that you are able to um, um, function on these particularly high occult levels, plain and simple. Uh, if you don't, then you're just a victim of society, ping-ponging your way around society. Today's a big, fun, happy day, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, uh, tomorrow's a depressive day because bad things have happened. People haven't been happy. So, I mean, you're the whole idea is that, you know, life is like that, but it shouldn't affect your inner being. It should be taken as what it is. Yes, life has its good days, its bad days, its ups, its downs, its rights and lefts. And the point is, is that that should not affect you. And uh, you need to really work at, at reaching this. Now, you know, it was also said of Bruce Lee that, you know, when uh, people stated, well, we need to go and practice to get better at what we're doing, that the first thing that he would do would go and meditate. So I think that says a lot. It's not about going out there and actually physically doing things that you've done a thousand times. It's about centering yourself so you can do those practices to their highest possible level. So this is where mind control comes in. This is where being able to meditate, the hardest thing to do is center yourself and be in a meditative, calm, inner state all the time. And particularly when other people are dumping on you. But once you start doing meditations and calming yourself down and getting into these states for longer and longer periods every day, uh, through meditative uh, practices, through stretching, through modified yoga. Um, uh, advanced yoga is not something I recommend because the postures and everything else uh, tend to take over the purpose of it, which is to relax and stretch you. Uh, Qigong is actually, again, modified, not necessarily long periods of time, but all these things assist the process of getting you into these meditative states. And meditating is very, very difficult because your mind is constantly jumping around this is the same mind that is controlling you 24-7 with ridiculous emotional responses to things. Uh, worry is one of them. Well, uh, planning for the future is important uh, on, on one level. Worrying about things that are not necessarily going to happen uh, past a certain level of planning is very destructive. You're worrying about things that may or may not ever happen and generally, in a lot of cases, don't happen. I think we've all done this, worried about, well, this could happen, and you're almost, you're programming yourself negatively that it's going to have this negative result. Well, we don't really know if that's negative or it's going to happen, and you can do some very terrible things thinking that, well, I have nothing to lose here, it's going to go bad. Well, is it going to go bad? So, everybody needs to know the ramifications of these things so that they... Uh, are able to function properly. But regardless of those things, you have to stay in that centered position. Uh, you need to approach everything in there. You don't approach magic from an emotional position either. This is not about generating emotions to scream at some poppet that you then destroy, like an imbecilic practice uh, of, of doing those things. Uh, while that is a minor uh, occult technique done by very low-level practitioners, it's not really where empowerment comes from. I mean, we all know generally that high emotions, unless you get into berserk states uh, of extreme violent uh, energies, produce absolutely nothing magically to produce something for your goal. So 
you have to deal with energies, you have to connect with them, you connect with energies, you transfer to them to yourself or to your particular target you're trying to affect. And this is all part of it. And this is not done in an emotional state that you're either gleeful because you want the results from it uh, or negative because you don't think it's going to work or anything in between that. It's about staying centered to your goal, doing what you have to do, which is what uh, most training does. I mean, when you get people that deal with um, uh, stressful situations uh, where you're in a panic type situation, or I should say emergency things like uh, uh, fire and police and other things. And of course, very few of them are able to do this as well. But generally what it really comes down to when it comes to real stressful situations is you always go back to your training. You're not concentrating that there are bombs going around you or somebody's bleeding to death in front of you. What you're doing is thinking of the training. What do I have to do to take care of this situation? Basically, you're staying in what's considered a very centered way. You're centering on your training. You're doing what you have to do to get it, and you're not putting the emotional into it. You're doing what you have to do. You're doing it to the best of your abilities. That's all that you can do. Um, and as such, you don't take any... Um, aftermath of emotions with it either. You've done your best. If you are a person uh, who works in a life and death situation, you've saved a life or you've lost a life. But no matter what you've done, you did the best you can in that situation. And if there can be improvement done, well, everybody looks for that. But some things are out of our hands as well. You can only do the best that you are trained to do and can do. Uh, and be, uh, past that, punishing yourself uh, for not getting X results, which may be impossible, which includes magic as well, is going to set you up for another bad ritual. So if you fail at some ritual because whatever you tried to do was really a kind of ridiculous or you expected too much of it, and then you go into the next ritual saying, well, all this is nonsense, it doesn't work, well, what kind of results do you think you're going to get in the future? But it's... You know, this is all about making judgments on things of saying something is good and something is bad. And, and this is another problem with the way of you have to be thinking. And we'll, we're going to cover that in a lecture in itself as well as, you know, the way you need to be thinking in general. But one of the problems is, is that when you tell people what is pretty much truth, they take that as negativity. Um, if you were to say that... Um, you know, uh, uranium, so to speak, or nuclear power uh, is very toxic, um, that would be a statement of truth. But it necessarily isn't bad. It's not bad. It's not negative. It's the truth. It's the reality of it. This is a toxic substance. Hemlock is poisonous. Is that negative? No, it's not negative. You're putting negative on it. It's poisonous. That's its purpose. So, all of this adds up to, um, to the way that you function in life and the way that you actually feel. And as you start using, as your emotions start kicking into all your processes, you start depowering yourself. And when you depower yourself, you fail. So theoretically, if someone comes up to you and screams in your face, you should not be put into a rage state. You should say, well, What's going on here? What's this person's problem? What is happening? Not the fact that, oh, you fucking piece of shit, I'm going to punch you in the face, I'm going to beat you with a hammer. I mean, when you start getting into these kind of thoughts, your whole body is going to uh, respond to this and create all sorts of negativity in your life. Uh, that does that serves you no purpose whatsoever. And it's been proven that these produce all sorts of toxic chemicals in the body as well. But when you upset your consciousness, it means when you do something else, what that person has done to you is now has upset you. And people do this all the time. Well, I can't eat now. I'm not, I can't eat. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I can't concentrate. Well, they've affected you. That should not happen. Let They affected themselves by creating that, and they're going to have those problems. If you allow them to transfer that onto you, you are not in a high state of consciousness. So you need to react from everything from kind of a separate viewpoint. Let that energy hit your android while you stand to the side, your real inner magical being, your higher self, and is not affected. And you need to do uh, constant daily meditations, and you should be doing meditations uh, ultimately at least three times a day, 
uh, for 5 to 15 minutes. Once you get these feelings up, once you're able to get into these meditative states, you start feeling better and better in general. It should be one of the happiest times in your day. Uh, but it's very difficult to do that because your mind says, I'm too busy, I can't calm down, I don't want to think about this nice shit, I don't want to be balanced. This is what your brain is doing to you. And it's very, very important that you uh, understand that kind of factor and stay balanced and work on meditation is critically important and there's many, many different ways and techniques uh, from listening to music to looking at candles to looking at flashing lights you've got to find what gets you into that uh, meditative state and then you have to keep that keep doing that in your mind so it becomes a habit and once it does um, if you use let's say a candle for meditating on the flame you know every time that you light a candle you're going to almost inst after a period of time you're going to instantly go into a deeper and deeper state of meditation and feel better and one of the biggest keys to meditation and doing most other things, one of the most surprising things that few people ever really think about, is smile. You've smiled so many times in your life and it's directly related to the pleasure zones within your brain. So just by the fact of smiling changes everything. So if you get into a, some sort of situation that is very stressing, smile and everything changes. Try that simple thing and you'll be amazed what happens. But you want to do that when you get into high states of success and feelings in general. In meditation you want to make sure you smile through the whole process. When you do your magic rituals you want to smile through the whole process. It's all part of this empowerment that is um, uh, that is there um, in general for uh, people that um, want to go to higher levels and it isn't that difficult. But if you don't stay centered, if you allow every little breeze, every little emotion, every little jerk everywhere to get into your head, and that's what they're doing, they're getting into your head and controlling you like a robot, then you have made a serious, serious error. Um, which will affect all your practices and basically make you a very impotent uh, occult, occultist because you've allowed this simple process. And people overlook these things. You know, they want techniques, they want to do this, when I'm going to be empowered, when I'm going to reach this, when I'm going to do that. You know, we see this constantly of people saying, you know, I want results, I want results uh, as quick as possible. You're not doing really anything except working on techniques without building a proper foundation with it. You know, in our entire training, we give you the foundation that will empower you. We know it works. You have to make it work in your particular life. And of course, ultimately, that's all that matters. But this works. This has been proven. You do these things, you will be your, uh, empowered dramatically from wherever you're at now. Um, plain and simple. But things are not just do this technique out of this book and you are going to, in itself, is that technique going to work to the level that you want it. Um, you need to build that foundation. If you expect to do extreme things uh, physically, it means you have to work out, you have to exercise. You don't expect to run a marathon because you like the shiny trophy you get at the end of the marathon without practicing running and, uh, and practicing very diligently. So uh, it's not the fact that you want a result, it's what it takes to get that. And there are no instantaneous results ultimately. Uh, you, uh, Guild products empower you from the minute you get them and build you up from wherever you are very quickly. But that's not good enough for most people. People want abilities. They want uh, almost comic book and movie-like abilities, which are just a little bit ridiculous to begin with. So the whole idea is that you will grow and you have to watch the things in life. And we talk about that process in other lectures as well. But ultimately, everything still has to be, you have to be at a certain centered level to judge everything by. Was this result good or not? Instead of everything being this emotional roller coaster, this sucks, this is great, oh, I'm happy, oh, I'm sad, I want to blow my brains out. Uh, I mean, these are the type of things that you go through in a typical day. Um, which upsets your entire core being, 
Uh, and this upsets the inner magical being who the common mind that produces this is fighting the inner magical being, which is the being that produces extreme abilities. And if this process continues, uh, you don't empower yourself, plain and simple. So it's very, very critical that you learn how to be centered in life. And yeah, it's real hard too. You're going to have to work on it. And meditation and everything else, as I've always said, is boring. There's nothing interesting about it initially. Once you get into medication, you get over these blockages that the mind is creating, you are getting into a great state. I mean, people drink, they smoke, uh, they smoke pot and other things and take all sorts of drugs or eat foods and everything else because they want the feelings that are being generated from it. Well, meditation will get you some pretty good high positive feelings, but you need to work towards that. While well, taking drugs and eating food and everything else are, are very instantaneous. But once you create these feelings, these meditative state feelings, your whole consciousness remembers them. And the whole idea is to stay in that state ultimately 24-7, which you can't do with anything else because you, the folly of all the physical things, the drugs, the food is that your body cannot sustain those. You can't stay drunk all the time. You can't stay high all the time. You can't eat all the time. Uh, even though people have tried all this uh, endlessly and continue to do, but this will destroy you physically and mentally. Your body cannot handle it. You can feel high in your life, quote, most of the time if you maintain this centered state uh, which is always kind of this nice, peaceful, hey, everything's cool, um, no matter what's happening. And that's really something to be uh, worked towards and very important to your actual process. So there is no reality until the occult scientist creates it and stays in it. Believe nothing, question everything, and let the guild be your guide.